Hello, once again this weekend we're rekindling the sporting rivalry between the Aussies and the Poms because here at the Travis Perkins UK Championship it's Melbourne Maverick, Quinton Han, up against Wellingborough's Man of Steel, Peter Ebden. Those fellas are playing off for a place in the quarterfinals. But it's already been a very eventful weekend, what with the departure of the reigning champion, Mark Williams, and another former winner of this championship, John Higgins, and for once, the Wizard of Wishaw was unable to pull a rabbit out of the hat. James Watanai got off to the best possible start in the second session of his second round match with John Higgins taking the first frame. And when Higgins missed this relatively easy red, Watanai was able to open up a seven frames to three lead. The Wizard of Wishaw did manage to conjure up a ton in the next, but in truth he was simply blown off the table by the Typhoon. 9-4. Who'd have thought it? Definitely not James. Hard luck, John. Well played. Well done. To beat John over the longer distance, you know, I mean, them players are just so hard to beat, you know. And the scoreline just totally out of my, you know, not even a single thought, you know, you know, because he just... Uh, such a great, great player. I'm, I'm just trying to, to you know, uh, stick with it. You know, stick with him. Try not to let him get away. You know, far away. You know, because the last time I played John, I lost him. If I can recall, I lost him 10-1, six nil. You know, and uh, I was just glad that to win more than two frames. Really, when he plays like that, he's definitely one of the top players in the world. And he, he's a he's a gentleman of the game of snooker because even when he's been. He's been struggling by his own standards and falling down the rankings. You, you've never ever seen him any other way, and he's he's a long way from home as well. Uh, and he just he just gets on with with the game, and he, you all see him with a smile on his face. So, and that in that respect, I'm I'm glad he's I'm glad he, he's playing well again. But obviously, I'm very disappointed with him beating me. But I hope he can go on and have a good run because uh, with the way he's playing, he's definitely capable of doing it. 7-1 down overnight, Ian McCulloch had a virtually impossible task. A first frame century was really just a show of defiance. The rocket responded in quick fire fashion with two tons of his own, with even the amused Michaela Tab struggling to keep up. Ronnie now advances to a third round tie against Alan McManus. His life away from the table, it seems, couldn't be any better. Or could it? Uh, that's better than sex, you know, playing snooker in front of a crowd is better than sex, mate, don't worry about that. That is the biggest buzz I've ever had in my life, and that's something that I've got, but I have to be good to it as well, you know, I have to, you know, um, I can't abuse it, you know, I've abu I, I can be quite an abusive sort of person towards it, take things for granted, and it needs to be sort of like cherished in a way, and, um, and that's what you have to do. Snooker is my life, you know, I might not play in a few years or a year or next. I don't know, but at the moment I'm giving it a go and it's okay. Tomorrow, and I could be sitting in 9-0 beating my McManus and telling you I want to throw the game in, but that's me, you know, and that's what I have to be careful of. Yes, the rocket, candid and brutally honest as ever. Right, let's get on with the latest England-Australia match. It features a former world champion, Peter Ebden, dogged, determined, and he's up against one of the game's genuine free spirits, Quinton Han, a fellow who's been known to smash the balls up from the break-off and who loves to ride his Harley when he's not playing snooker. Well, it was Ebden who started out with great purpose, racing to a 3-0 lead. And now in the fourth frame, we're going to join Willie Thorne and Terry Griffiths in the commentary box. One. He's played about two bad shots, that's all. And Peter could get a sizeable lead here, which of course could lead to 4-0. Yeah. Excellent positional shot. Gives them a chance to get the black into play in both pockets. Five. Thank you. 
13. Peter, just having a look at the angler needs on the black to go into them, and uh, you've heard me talk on commentary before about packs of reds. This is not a great one to go into from the black. And I agree 14. with the way he's played it high if he's going to go into them. He's possibly played for choice of pink or black here, but the angle he's got on the black is perfect. And you generate a lot more spin when going into the pack off to, with top spin off the cushion, whereas going into them with screw, <coughs> sometimes it just sticks on them. I think he's got the option of playing the black, he should play it. We didn't do anything wrong trying to go 4 0 without being aggressive in this frame. Good shot needed now. Twenty. Choice of shot selection for Peter here. I mean, he's refused the half ball black to go into them when it was perfect. And he's just played a screw Good shot bad. there. But once again, I no idea where the cue ball was going to go. Very strange choice of shot. But once again, not left anything straightforward for Quinton. And the reds are spread far and wide. One. Great shot. Great shot. Because he knew that if should he miss that, it was 4 0. He'd expect him to pot it 9 out of 10, but when you're 3 0 behind, that becomes about 7 out of 10 sometimes. And if he didn't win the frame of this visit now, then he has himself to blame because these couldn't be better. Eight. Sixteen. Quite sure what he played there. He didn't want that uh, kiss on the red, though. Still got one available. Didn't quite catch the cue ball properly. Try to get it past that red. More difficult pot available, but uh, if he gets it, he's still in them. Seventeen. That was an excellent recovery. I was just ready to kind of say, be disappointed not to have won the frame at that visit, but that recovery pot was excellent. No need to play a cannon here, probably playing through the gap of the reds just above the black. Yes, he probably played the gap, but the little flick's no problem. 24. 25.
Well, there's plenty of reds plenty of to go for. Just needs to uh, keep the cue ball under close control. Thirty-two. Thirty-seven. Dot eight. It's all running well now. Survived a slight Four crisis five. early on in this break. Got a good red in the centre. Got the recovery going. 46. Quinton's highest break of this match and he's making hard work of it isn't he 53 Not sure if he's worried here that you can see the red or worried about where the cue ball's going to end up. He can get through that. Fifty-four. Just can't get that uh, one positional shot now. That'll clinch him the frame. It's come a bit awkward again. In between pink and blue. Nine. It's unbelievable to think he's having to pop balls like this the way the balls were spread when it came to the table. But just one more good pot and position and it would be a certainty. That 60. Perfect. Very good standard this match has been so far. Ebden started with 67. The Clyde with a 1 2 1 in the second frame. And should have won frame three. Lost it without Ebden making any sort of sizable contribution. And Han with his back to the wall has now made 68 and counting to take frame four. Five. 
76. Ninety-one. He deserves a hundred, yeah. Had to pull off a lot of good pots, slipped out of position a few times, but uh, striking the ball well. And he'd be pleased to get on the scoreboard. A 3 0, it looked as if Peter Ebden may overrun him. Yes, and the only disappointing thing, Quinton knows eight, eight. it should be 2 2, but no Friends, sense. He'll be disappointed hand. with that, but he won't be disappointed by taking the frame. He goes into the interval by trailing three frames to one. Yeah, I bet you were singing along just like us. Well, now, Quinton is now living in West London, determined to give the tour everything this season. And his newfound dedication is beginning to pay off. He won frame five with breaks of 66 and 41. And now in the sixth, he already has a lead of 37 points. Well, it just shows you what being kept off the table for some time can do. That was very, very poor queuing from Peter Ebden. Completely miss it this shot, and you have to take or give Quinton credit for making Peter Ebden cue badly. He was playing fantastic in the first two and a half frames. Ebden, Quinton has certainly stopped the rot, and now is in the ascendant. One. What? Here's Peter Ebden. Seemed to take an eternity over that shot. He was under pressure. He knew the balls were wide open. He's, a, he's only scored uh, 20 points in the last three frames, and here's this red. It's mid distance. He'd knock those in with no trouble normally. Six. Well, 
bad contact that uh, hasn't affected things. Eleven. Such is uh, Quinton Hans' domination that he's uh, scored over 250 points without reply. That takes uh, some doing against any player, but uh, he's 258 points. Against Peter Ebden, will you play so well early on, didn't he? Yes, it's quite some time since I've seen a complete turnaround in a match like this. One player you would expect the way he started to have won a session probably by six frames to two at least, the way it was queuing. And in the last hour of play, Quinton Han is now sounded like a player that could take a lead into the 16. second and final session. Nineteen. Once again, it hasn't been all straightforward for Quinton Hahn. He's kept slipping slightly out of position, but uh, he is striking the ball really well, full of confidence. 20. Just get the feeling he doesn't care where the cue ball stops, he's going to pot the next one. And you can see a difference in his demeanour around the table and his facial expression. He's almost got a little wry grin on his face at the moment. He's bouncing around the table. Really enjoying himself, and he knows now this is an excellent opportunity for 3-3. Three, three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Frame already safe, the black to make that a definite reality. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. No wonder people keep saying the game looks easy on television. A great run of form from Peter Ebden early on and now it's Quinton Han and uh, there's pressure out there. But uh, it doesn't look like it the way he's playing. 47. Well, the Quinton break comes to end at 47. Peter Ebden acknowledges defeat in that frame and what a comeback this is from Quinton Han. He scored well over 300 points without reply in the last three frames to level at three all. He's certainly on a roll. Han won frame seven as well. That's four on the trot now, and it's the first time he's led in this match. But now in the final frame of the session, he's got a fair bit of work to do himself, trailing by 43 points. I was well, just about to say, because four, he's 44 he's points behind, he's trying to bring the 
red that was in the safe position into play. But hit it far too fine. Now, will Peter risk a pot? He should do, really. A player of his class, you don't really refuse long straight pots. But I wonder whether he's going to play the deep screw back into Bork that he sometimes plays Terry, or will he play like a Hendry or O'Sullivan would? A stun run through for the black. Well, it looks like he's just uh, pushing it through, taking the cue ball down for the black. Totally didn't I? Guess again. Well, I don't know that shot was, Willie, to be honest. Then. Well, he, does, he tries to make things sometimes, Peter, into shot to nothings for no reason. A player of Peter's class which would knock that one in. He could still play a stun run through and leave the white low on the black. He couldn't leave a red on. <coughs> yes, but the white was in hand. He could have uh, moved the white about in bark, left one like three-quarter ball run through, didn't have to stun it, even it was... Non-committal, I think, was, which is uh, protecting the lead he had. Yes, it just shows you then how, how out of sync that uh, Peter has got purely because of Quinton Hand's dominance in the last four frames. Quinton would love to play the, the loose red, but I don't think he can quite see enough of it to, to pot it. Only a safety. He doesn't want to push a red safe. He'd like to keep them all in open plate. Is there a shot to nothing on his found? Well, there was. One needs a bounce to make the brown a proposition. Well, he's not even looked at the brown yet. This was a good pot. He virtually got straight down, wanting to play the snooker beyond the yellow. Another two inches of pace. He'd be potting the brown. One, Quinton Han. Oh, Terry, which one did he hit? How does he get safe? Well, he'll have to play off two cushions and try and uh, snick off the red, surely. Ooh, that was close. Well, the miss. Four, Quinton Han. Now then. Free ball. Will he play the brown as a free ball? He should do. Yes, you're right. Yellow. Uh, yellow's yellow. got an angle there to drop that in the middle. Perhaps he seems uh, that's an easier pot for him. <coughs> the only reason I suggested the brown is guaranteed to cover the loose red with the blue. And he can still get on the brown again because it comes from its own spot. Playing the yellow as a run through would possibly leave this loose red. And the yellow's into a blind pocket, whereas the brown would be into an open pocket. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's there and played to perfection. <laughs> this is a chance. Brown. Well, he got the yellow what? and he covered the red also with the blue, which you were mentioning, Willie, so he played that shot well. But you're right, it was a blind pocket, it was a good pot. Both players have overrun the cue ball on that Five. shot this evening. He's played for a choice of reds. As it happens, I didn't think that one potted. I thought he played for the choice of the other two, so he's actually played the shot very well indeed. Six. And even though, as we speak, he's 36 points behind Terry, his favourite to win the frame here. Yes, you're quite right, Willie, the way the reds are placed, but it's an important frame. He knows 13. it. Thirteen. You have to slip out of position a fraction of an inch, and that could uh, finish things off.
14. Despite all the points that uh, Gordon Hahn has accumulated this evening, he's done it with a lot of awkward shots involved. Even when the balls are perfect, he seems to slightly slip out of position. And there you see he's uh, over 100 points in front of Peter Ebden. Despite uh, Peter Ebden being 3-0 in front, and uh, Peter Ebden actually won one of the frames by uh, 120 points. Yes, the only thing that uh, can come to Peter's favour here is a is a kick. 21. This is a practice position. But already has been hampered queuing once, hampered queuing again with a spider. He's doing it, he's doing his best to make it difficult. Twenty-two. And because he's finished low on the black, he's going to have to play the cannon now. He can either play the cannon into the pink or he can play the cannon into the middle of the three reds, either which will avail good position. <laughs> he's left himself hampered again. Wanted one kiss, not two. Twenty-nine. Just the one kiss would have been great. The fact that he got two kisses has left him hampered now. Thirty. Play that one well. Sometimes when the uh, balls are staring you in the face as they are here for Quinton Hahn, it just can put a little bit more pressure on you. Tend to look a bit of a mug if you miss from here. 38. Really has been a struggle this break from what appeared to 44. be a straightforward position. Two points in front. So one good pot on the red. Should be enough. Played 45. That very well. Had to avoid the camera on the blue. Had to make sure he hit it hard enough to get the ball on off the cushion. He did both. Yeah, he could have played that red and swung the cue ball in and out to Bach just in case he missed it. But uh, positive choice, choice of shot. Not the case with Peter Ebden a bit earlier on in this frame. When he had a bash at a long red instead of stroking it in, it could cost him. 49. Yes, I'm sure he felt he was done enough to win this last frame. Just checking the scoreboard to find out that how many more killers that young Quinton Ham will need to make the frame safe. 52. He now knows that brown and blue will be the case.
56. Well, this has really been an excellent performance from Quinton Hunt. You can almost see the smile written across his face. He knows he's pulled trees up here to get out of this session winning 5-3. To win five 61. frames on the trot against any player is very, very good. To win it against one of the top eight players in the world is excellent. Ebden started with a 44, look favourite to win the frame. Ham replied with a 67 clearance to Pink to take it and go into the final session, leading by five frames to three. And doesn't his smile tell it all? Sure, Paul, that's nothing to worry about. And looking down the draw in full, Fergal O'Brien and Jimmy White are still to settle their third round match. When it plays Joe Perry or Nigel Bond in the quarterfinals. Just to confirm, Paul Hunter awaits either Matthew Stevens or James Wattener in the last eight. Ronnie O'Sullivan and Alan McManus play tomorrow. We're going to meet Peter Ebden or Quinton Han in the last eight. Having dumped world number five Stephen Lee out of the tournament, world number 36 Barry Pinchard will play either the up-and-coming Ali Carter or the legendary Stephen Henry. And so now to Peter Ebden against Quinton Han. Quinton's had to take it on the chin in the last few days in regard to England's Rugby Union World Cup success. But the Australian has been showing signs that off the table or on the table, he can just about take anything in his stride. But it was Peter that took the first three frames. Quinton then replied with the next five. And the match moved on. He's now 7-4 up. We're going to pick it up in frame 12. Quinton to play. He's 12 points up. Ray Edmonds and John Virgo were in the commentary box. Well, he could take it on. And he's been lucky there. And I don't care whether he leaves the red or not. He's not the brown safe, he's not the yellow down to this end of the table. Yeah. And it's... Okay. Peter's got it all to do to win the frame at this visit, believe me. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure why he lifted the butt of the, the queue then, Quinton, and did it at that pace. I thought if he was going to go to it, he might have just as well and played it nice and smooth. Yeah, well, I think he tried to avoid the cannon on the green, Ray, but just playing it naturally he would have done to be fair I mean he just flicked the brown I mean he's, he's very close to pot of course we're sat in this commentary box and it can help players see it when they're down at the table difference of opinion my opinion here is that this is a chance for Peter but the way the balls are situated, a very difficult one. One. Mm, played it a little too well. More of an angle on the blue than he would have liked. Makes it more difficult to get close to the yellow. Well, 
Celtic. It's a finished contact. He's got to miss the middle jaws if he's going to get the cue ball down towards the green. Needs a good angle on the green. He's not got it. So, he's on the green, but it's going to be a good shot to get from green to brown. He's got a lot of things to avoid here. Pockets. No one thing. The black. Possibly the pink. He went that way, and this looks good. Eleven. As long as he's not too straight. Oh, and he's going to be too straight. That's unlucky. Applause from the the audience, but that's no good to Peter. He's one point behind. All he can do here is roll the brown in and play safe off the blue. He tries somehow to pot this brown and try to get in the middle of the tail for the blue. He'll miss the brown and he'll be trusting to look. I mean, he can play the pot, he can play safe off the brown. He's playing the safety, is he? He is. 11. He's, 11. he's played the snooker behind the black and he's made a good fist of it. Good shot. Not the snooker, but second best. Well played. taken it's not too difficult well how did that one go in oh. so Peter needs the pink as well and the mid session interval coming up and it'd be interesting to see what bearing it has on the match it's been a frame that's coming up close to 50 minutes very tense, hard frame. Nine. Peter's not on the pink. No, there's a bit of snooker left in it yet, Ray, isn't there? He's not going to win it at this visit, I believe, because it looks to me, and Quinton Hand sits there, but you know that the odds are he'll be coming back to the table. Can't believe Peter will play the double here. Will he? Pink for the frame. Pink for the frame. It's there. 15. Well, it's what there. a result. So what a battle of Peter Ebden is. He's still in this match now. 7-5 at the interval. First to nine goes into the quarterfinals. Into frame 13. Peter to play. He's got 11 points to make up. There's one red remaining. snookered and this time there's no easy roll up off one cushion big swerve oh. the green four the red well, will this red pass the pink if it does there's no way Peter Ebden will have the balls replaced which will please the referee oh, no doubt 
Yes, I'm sure. Lorianne <laughs> just had a little shudder there thinking, oh no, but uh, there you are, the little smile. But he's delighted, and it's a fairly big pocket, this Peter Evans. What a chance to come within one frame. And he's used every inch of the pocket. One. And maybe that won't work to his advantage, although, well, at least he still should be able to get back to the yellow off the pink. Well, you say that, it's a bit of a stretch over. Can't believe he played it that way. I mean, personally, I think, well, why not play it with more pace, go up for the blue? I'm not certain. Well, he's stretching. Well, in it went. Now, will the yellow go to the right centre pocket? Because it's not on Seven. the far right corner. Points are all square. 46 apiece. But the frame score is Peter Ebden 5, Quintin Han 7. Big frame. Well, Peter's taking it onto the corner. Cue ball going round the table. Difficult pot. Pot's okay. Nine. Nine, you could say he's on the green. <coughs> but not how he meant to be. It's unlucky though, isn't it? It was a good pot, and he judged the line well, and to come nestling up to the green, very unlucky. But he's got an easy snooker to lay here. Well, no. Nine, Peter Ebden. Four, Quentin Hunt. Well, how can Three you ball. believe that? He didn't hit the green. I don't think he'll be having the ball put back because mm. a miss was called, do you, John? No, I think Laurie Annandale was wasting his breath there shouting this, but what a mistake that was, Ray. How costly will it be? And now it's decision time, though, for Quinton. There's no easy pot on. Has he got the snooker? Pink. Well, he's going for broke, John, I think. See whether it's the right decision in a moment. Well, it's a free ball. Peter Ebden snookered. Why not put him back in? I mean, he'd be trusting to luck to get this green safe. But he's... Play the pink. Well, he's got to be careful. I don't understand that shot whatsoever. Well, one can only think that he wasn't fully snookered. Maybe Peter could hit the green, but uh, even so, why play it like that? If the pink had got in the way, it'd have been a foul stroke. But uh, Peter Edward can get through to the edge of the green. green is possible but I think he's going to be slightly hampered by the black or well, maybe he just can get the cue parallel with the table and into the middle of the cue ball just Unlucky. Three. He could be snookered here. Just caught the bump of the middle pocket. But for that, you do expect him to. <laughs> Somebody in the audience laughed and Quintin wasn't amused and said, Is that funny? <laughs> it's a cruel and hard game sometimes, Quintin. But he's not let it get to him so far in this match. 
No, we did say that earlier on, John, that uh, Quinton's temperament at times, he let things get on top of him, but he'd been exemplary <laughs> throughout this match. He maintained his cool and his con concentration, but uh, it's getting frustrating. He needs a bit of luck. Played. He didn't trust the look there. He played to hit it just for it to reach this end cushion. Maybe drop behind the pink. Hasn't done that. And Peter Ebden doesn't Four. need what might prove to be the difficult black. Yeah. Just blue and pink. Cut the deficit to one frame. Night. <laughs> So now it's becoming anybody's match, this. Seven frames in a row. Quinton Han won. Fifteen in frame. Looked Two a hot favourite and was. Not so now. There's not a lot to choose between them. Just one frame. Seven six to the Australian. Three on the run for Peter. Can he keep it going into frame 14 now? It's Quinton to play. He's 23 points behind. Once he'd taken One. it on, a terrific pot that, John, really, wasn't it? He deserved to perhaps have better position, although I think he is on the pink. He's possibly some tremendous balls in this match. He really has. He's on the pink, but I'm not certain if the pink goes back on its spot where the next red comes from. Now, does the pink go back on its spot? If it does, is this red available? I would assume it is. Well, ooh, does it go on? This is a very big decision from Laurie Annandale. No, it doesn't. Seven. If it had a done, there'd have been nothing there for Quinton to go at. Now, a good chance. Peter Ebden there, chalking his cue. But I don't think he'll, he'll need to be hit, or he'll have a chance to hit a ball for a few shots yet. Hit. decided to play for the blue but he's made the, the cardinal error he's come too straight he might just be able to force an angle but he needed a nice angle just to drop it in well he made a bit of an angle he played a lot of right hand side 13. as well pink on the black spot which suits him fine Let's just roll this in and pink for the opposite corner. 14. A few little intricate positional shots to develop the situation into a frame when in one. But you certainly expect him to be in front at least at the end of this visit. surprised me a little why did he take the cannon a little stun shot on the loose red the two reds that he disturbed 20. would certainly would have been available once the pink was off its spot for the left corner and now it's uh, just slightly more tricky and the blacks available though one. it's okay he's 
fact, he's near perfect, so. Black will take him into the lead. Yes, and this is an excellent performance from Quinton Han, having led 7-3 to see Peter Ebden win three frames in succession. Would have put doubt into his mind, but he seems to have put that all behind him in this frame. He's potted some excellent reds. And now just a couple of good positional shots away from winning this frame. He's five points in front. And those reds that are left on the table with colours would be sufficient to give him this frame. It's not straightforward. As I say, just a couple of inch perfect positional shots. And he'll be on his way. Well, he skipped the chance of leaving the angle with his last six. shot. He needs to get into the reds this time off the black. Thirty-seven. Yeah, maybe he can just roll the black in, come be behind the two reds, just knock them apart and leave the one to the left corner. Could be ideal, this. Mustn't miss the black, that's the main thing. Same result 44. in a different way. Now, what a chance. Made a 44 break in the last frame and lost it. 52. Now 29 points in front. Needs a red and a black. But he may find that the angle is easy to go out for the pink. Which then means he'd need the other red. It, just as he sees it. Well, that was a pot. He's played for the blue, so he's going to need the last red now. It's a little bit wide, but just had the right pace for the pocket to accept the ball. It's looking not too good at the moment for Peter Ebden. on this red he's gonna kiss it he's not on it he's 35 58. points in front there's 35 left he's not on the pot but he's got an easy snooker to lay big favor Peter can't do a lot with it, but it's easy to hit. But what a splendid 58 break that was. He really worked hard, some great shots to keep it going. And considering that uh, he'd lost three frames in a row, he'd been put through the ringer by Peter Ebden. Great reply. 
and he's nearly over the finishing line. Isn't he? Not quite. Oh, he oh. might be now, though. For Quinton Han. So Peter Ebden now wanting a snooker, so it looks as if he's one frame near a defeat. So Pete has to show world championship winning form to stay in the tournament. He's up the table, eight points up in frame 15. Where's the cue ball going? Where's that cue ball going? Foul. For Quinton Han. You can say I'm lucky, but that pocket's been there for many a year. Absolutely, Johnny. Really shouldn't have been anywhere near it, should he? So a reprieve for Quinton. Just an easy red to uh, allow Peter that chance, and I'm sure he didn't expect to be back again quite as quickly. And he's, again, he's taking a tough red on, running into the black. Should knock it towards the corner if he plays it steadily. He didn't play it steadily, he took a chance, and... Uh, One. I don't think he'd be too unhappy at that, John, do you? Well, I'd certainly settle for it. Once again, a good pot. And he knew he was running into the black, but he thought playing it at that pace, he wouldn't be hitting the black full in the face, and there was every chance the cue ball would go up to the other end of the table. He's nicely on the blue. Of course, cannoning into the black as he did. Six. He's not the black safe, so... Peter may think he's got a chance after this. Well, good pots, but immediately I knew it was going to go close to the pocket, and so did Peter. Another day it could have rattled in the jaws and he'd have been on the black. Not today. Seven. So it's a case, really, of just chipping away at these. And he's come a little bit too straight on the blue for his liking. But he's really only blue and pink to play for off the reds. Well, maybe just a slight angle. Twelve. I mentioned on his last visit when he missed the easy red was the size of the winning line. You wouldn't expect it to. He's a good competitor, is Quinton. Yeah, he's been 13. to a, the quarter-final of the UK once before, the year 2000, before losing to Ronnie O'Sullivan. But it, it's not territory that he's too familiar with, quarter-finals, so... He's on the edge of really establishing himself in the top 16 for a year or two. He, he's number 14 now, but... Good season this year would give him uh, 18. two or three years of security. <coughs> 19. Yes, if he, uh, if he does get over the winning line, he'll play the winner of Matt Manus and Ronnie O'Sullivan. Could be a repeat of that quarter-final, but he's still got to win this vital frame. And Ronnie, of course, is still going to beat Alan Matt Manus. He didn't play for this red along the right cushion. He played for the lower red of the cluster. It was on, but he just didn't judge the positional shot. He's now having a look at the possibility of a plant. Mm, 
And certainly, as you can see, not in line. He's thinking about making it. But it's one of those, if he goes for this, he needs to go in because he's going to open all the reds. This is dangerous. But he's thinking, if I can knock this in, it could be the match winner. That's the only reason he's being tempted. Good shot. 25. And it could be now. Had to make that. Never touched a side, and he's on the pink. Yes, he does play a fair bit of American nine ball pool and uh, a lot of plants. 31. Made in that case. Pockets are somewhat larger, John. But nevertheless, that was a good shot and he's given himself an excellent chance. <coughs> Just must hold control of the cue ball for the next couple of shots. Thirty-two. Don't think he's quite far enough. He wanted to just drop behind, maybe the middle one of that line of three reds behind the pink. I think he's got just the wrong angle on the pink to do it easily. Yeah, I think it's one of those, anything but straight. Oh, he's not too bad. He can stun across for the red that's just in the corner of our picture. The red near the right hand cushion into the right corner pocket. We always say that the Apart from the odd occasion, the worst thing you want to be on any ball, be it red or a colour, is straight because you have only one option. You know, they go backwards or forwards line. If you've got an angle, there's certain things you can do with the cue ball. Unfortunately for Quinton, he's stunned it across nicely, but he's just gone a little bit too far. Playing this into a blind pocket, they are missable. as a whistle now as if he's on this pink if he's on the pink Ooh, just another three or four inches of pace and I would have called this a frame and match winning chance not just yet it was a good pot that played it confidently just a fraction short of pace for perfect position. Yes, I think it's even too much of an angle to screw the cue ball to the side cushion, then back across behind this red that's on the back cushion here. But worst case scenario for Quinton is that he misses the pink, gets the pink and miss position. He's still in control. Terrific shot. Terrific shot. 45. Had a lot of pace. Stunned off the side cushion. He's 41. Front. Red colour, red required. And another top seed 46. will bite the dust. Nothing he can do. He's had his chances. Will he get another one? I doubt it. Well, Quinton just again the wrong side of the pink, but enough. Oh, 
Oh, and that's a super shot again. He, he really has produced two very good breaks. 52. In the last two frames. 53. Now he's relaxed. He lost the first three frames to Peter Ebden. Won the next seven. 59. Lost the next three. And 60. he's won the final two. And this is a little bit of the potential that we've all known that this Australian's had. 66. Did say earlier that he has been working very hard. He's got his temperament together. Peter Ebden did his darndest, but Quinton Hahn was just too good at the finish and really thoroughly deserved to win by nine frames to six. To be honest, I thought I would win the match. Um, you know, there's not many times I've lost seven frames on the spin from three nil up. Uh, you know, against anyone, but he played really, really well, and um, you know didn't get the best run and you know that's what happened but you know he deserved to beat me he held himself together at the end and he had two fantastic breaks you know not a lot I can do about it I'm bitterly disappointed but um, you know he played better than me and he deserved to win. Tonight I wasn't playing as well as I did yesterday so I mean I was relieved to get the first two frames um, but I expected him to come back at me because I wasn't on the top of my game. I've been here for three months now I've sort of decided to come over here and give him my best shot. Um, so snooker is the only thing I do now. So it's, it means a lot to me. You know, I'm not going to practice four hours a day and then come in here and not try. I feel really happy because uh, it's early in the season. And I've, like I said, I've been practicing hard. I've worked with the coach uh, last week, first time in my life. And I've just seen, some, I've seen a lot of improvement in my game. And I believe that uh, you know, a lot of players can't really improve because they've been playing every day the whole life, but I haven't. You know, I've stopped playing for... You know, a year when I was 15, I stopped, haven't really played much last year, so I believe that I can improve. And I've seen it in practice, and just to, to do it in tournament, you know, it feels good. Well, Quinton Hand's fresh attitude already paying dividends, so it seems. Also having to progress through...